briefly review for us your qualifications, <coughs> including your education and your work experience that you think is relative for our consideration of you as a county administrator. And in your response, please address your budgeting experience, supervisory experience, and labor relations, including negotiation. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm assuming that everybody has a copy of my resume and whatnot, but I'll just briefly touch on my educational background. I have a four-year degree in finance and banking. Uh, within that, I have over 20 hours of uh, accounting. I did have enough courses that technically I could have sat and taken a CPA exam, but knowing that I would not be in the accounting business for two years to become a CPA, I didn't follow through on sitting for the exam. But uh, on top of that, I have uh, my law degree. Um, I've been an attorney for over 20 years, and I have been an assistant Blue Earth County attorney for 17 of those years, providing a, a variety of um, a variety of, of assignments. I've always indicated. Um, actually, I, I wrote my job description, if you will, to uh, and approved by first by Ross and then by the board at that time. And the, the phrase that I always like to see is at the end is other duties as assigned because it seems that uh, no matter what happens, there's always something that you don't expect and something that you don't plan for. And I think that's one thing that I definitely uh, bring is, is I have been over the years dealing with a variety of issues in many different areas. Um, what I think is, is relevant to this job is I have grown a skill set over the years. I have become a polished, effective leader. I have, I'm, I'm a, a proven a good speaker, good communicator, and typically I'm a problem solver. Uh, my phone, when it rings, and it rings quite often, I have questions posed to me. And usually when I get the phone calls, that's when people have the problems. And to give you an idea of some of those things, uh, you know, large, small, um, there's been times that uh, I, I not only have questions posed to me from other departments within the county, but I've developed the uh, reputation, if you will, not only inside Blue Earth County but outside of Blue Earth County, wherein I have people from the regional area contact me. And on a statewide level, I've been asked numerous times to provide education and training not only to law enforcement but also to attorneys. But what I have developed over the years is knowing that you have to take a look at everything from every angle, every possibility, on a multi-dimensional level. And that's what I bring to this because I make those types of decisions every day. I'm not afraid to make decisions and I'm not afraid to be a, a leader. And I've, I'm more than happy to take lead on, on many of these types of issues. So, This is uh, the second question. Is, uh, you complete the county's budget and there is a large deficit. How would you go about reducing this deficit and establishing funding priorities? And what do you see as the department head's role in the budgeting process and reducing deficits? I guess I'd start with the last question first. Um, not only, I mean, the department heads provide, and they, they don't ever underestimate, has always been my opinion, don't ever underestimate what a department head brings to the table. But not only that, but don't ever underestimate what the employees bring to the table. And when it comes to the budgeting process and reducing deficits, you know, everybody typically has an idea. And what you must do, in my opinion, is you sit down collectively as a group. Because, you know, problem solving, a lot of times more heads are better than one. But essentially, from a government standpoint, you need to determine first and foremost what are the essential services that you're providing. You know, uh, these we must do. I mean, you're going to have to plow the roads. You're going to have to arrest the criminal. You're going to have to provide these types of ser services. Those are the critical services, the, the unfunded mandates, if you will, the mandates according to, to law. Uh, you know, in, in many respects, um, government, just like business, is regulated by laws, statutes, rules, regulations, policies, procedures, and protocols. And I deal with those on a daily basis. But within that, when you collectively get everybody together, somebody comes up with some idea somewhere. And you go from the essential services that you have to consider, that you can't, that you always have to provide, that, that uh, the citizens demand that they provide, 
to the secondary, the things that started getting into the livability. Okay, is this a critical service or is this a livability issue? And then on the third level, you know, it's kind of a livability, if you will, from a group standpoint. Is this something that, it, that the county is providing this? And because in many departments, uh, you know, county attorney's office, for an example, and, and administrator's office, for an example, you are dealing with primarily pens, paper, people, and you go from there and where are you going to cut? I mean, it's easy to walk in and say, um, okay, we're just going to do a 10% across the board cut. But that's not really what you need to do. You need to prioritize. You need to figure out what is critical, what is the most important, and how is this going to affect the citizens? Because, you know, the, the citizen, the citizens elect you, the board members, the board members create policy, and the administrator's job is to assist in facilitating and carrying out that policy. But sometimes, and especially when it comes to budgetary constraints, constraints you need to make tough decisions. And, but you just need to make sure that everybody is well informed of what impact things may have. Okay. The one that usually always comes to my mind is a case that I prosecuted years ago. And in that case, uh, the defendant was essentially given a death sentence before we could complete prosecution. And because of that, it was a homicide case, it was a serious case, and, um, and don't get me wrong, I've always said all cases are serious to somebody, but the, the, the homicide cases obviously garner more attention. But in that case, this individual uh, was going to die before we would be able to proceed with the case. I had pressure from various agencies, various departments within the county. I actually sat down with a commissioner and explained my decision-making process to the commissioner. I was verbally, I'm going to stop. That. I was verbally accosted by uh, the nurse that was taking care of this individual, and the job is not always to do what people think. The job is to do essentially what is right. So that's next question: Explain what diversity means to you, and describe why it is an important element of the county administration. Question number eight. You know, uh, Mr. Chair, when, when somebody says diversity, most people just simply think, okay, we're talking about race and, and gender. Uh, that's not diversity. I mean, you have to look at the overall picture. When, when you think, or when I think about diversity, I think about all the different personalities, all the, all the different things that people bring to the table. And you always need to remember everybody, no matter how small of a role that they play, they bring something to the table. Uh, you know, in, in the workplace, it's, it's in the differences in the way that they think. You know, um, I think, I look back to drug court. Uh, there's many times that, that I would pull the rest of my hair out if I could. But you need to realize and you need to understand, you need to know when to listen, you need to know when to speak, you need to know when to show empathy. And that's what diversity basically is, is, is allowing yourself to realize and understand and know that they, you know, somebody might be in the minority, minority position, but at some point in time, maybe you'll think that's a pretty good idea, you know, or you, I don't look at it this way. Uh, you know, I, I, sometimes I'm a concrete thinker, and if you open yourself up, if you diversify, and if you listen to people, if you are willing to hear them out and try to understand where they're coming from, uh, you're going to be better off in the long run. And I think my motivation, um, I enjoy what I do, I enjoy the challenges, and I enjoy working with the, uh, a vast number of people, a vast number of issues. And I think that I do that now on a daily basis. I, like I've said before, I've, I've developed over the years that skill set, that skill set that people have come to me to ask me to help solve their problems, to have me present on issues for them, and uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it goes from, I, I look at it from this standpoint, everybody brings something to the table, and when you, uh, one of the reasons I, I like my job is because I get that diversity, and I know that doing this job I honestly feel that with my skill set and my qualifications, I can assist you collectively as the board, and I can also assist the, the, the citizens of Blue Earth County. I mean, I've been, I've been speaking on, uh, for citizens from Blue Earth County for over 17 years now, you know, and some of them can't speak. 
somebody needs to do that. What do you see as some priorities for Blue Earth County as it relates to technology, economic development, budget, and environment? I see the issues facing Blue Earth County um, in the future, for example, you know, getting back to the infrastructure. You need to provide the infrastructure on a brick and mortar basis and also on, the, on a technology basis. You have a, a population that is growing older. Blue Earth County uh, is becoming more and more urbanized. You know, you look at some of the smaller counties surrounding, they're losing population. Blue Earth County is gaining in popula population, and that's because of the urbanization. You need to keep up on everything that deals <coughs> with, that comes along with that. Why is Blue Earth County urbanizing? Because the services are here. The, the services for the elderly population are here. The services for the uh, diverse culture is here. There are many services that Blue Earth County provides. And, you know, that's, that's something that you as a board have to stay on top of. What is the trend? What is going to happen? How is this going to affect the schools? How is this going to affect the infrastructure? How is this going to affect going back to uh, hooking up with sewer and water in some of these lakes? You know, you need, to, you need to stay on top of those types of issues. And that's what I see as, you know, the, the economic development. Um, you know, with that, the tax base increases and whatnot, you have all sorts of different issues. But if you can stay on top of that, the, you know, uh, Victory Drive project, there's another one. That's a big infrastructure issue. County Road 90, that's a big infrastructure issue. I mean, there's, there's types of things that happen. There's more and more happening in, in this city, in this county, all the time. Thank you.